All right, we moved on to the cab of the truck now. Uh, this is the back corner of the cab on the driver's side. Here's the gas filler neck just to kind of help orientate you to what's going on. Uh, these back corners on these trucks, they were, they're pretty well known for rusting out. And what I had done a few years ago, uh, I had never done a rust patch before. And so I tried it out on my truck before doing it on, on anybody else's. And this is where I put that patch. Um, the patch goes, I cut it out right here, all the way down around this corner, uh, ground it all down, welded in a new piece of metal, ground the welds off, put filler over it. And it was, uh, it turned out pretty well. It turned out pretty good for, for my first time. But there's a couple things I'm gonna need to address on here before I paint it. I had a couple of high spots uh, where the weld stuck out. So there's still one right here. So I'm gonna get a body hammer and I'm gonna come by and I'm gonna hit those high spots and try to make them at least a, a dent. So I can fill it and uh and it'll be nice and straight and flat and and won't won't look like a a patched in panel hopefully These trucks, they came with a, a black strip. I'm not gonna put these black bump strips back on. Because of that, it needs to be, we need to get it as good as we can. I did one coat of Bondo over this whole thing and then blocked it down with 36 grit because uh, I knew it was it was pretty far off It needed quite a bit of work. So I took it down with 36 grit, then I cleaned it. I put on another coat of Bondo and I blocked that down with 80 grit. So you can see I've still got some low spots. I'm low right in there. There's one right there. Uh, here, Just here and there, there's some little low spots. So the last step before I get ready to prime it, I'm going to put one more real light skim coat of Bondo on there and I'm going to block it down with 180 and then it'll be ready for primer. If you've got a smaller dent like I had right here, uh, this is a replacement fender. It's obviously off of a white truck, but uh, it had one little dent right there. So I was able to fill that little dent and I went right to 180. Uh, so there it is after the last light skim coat. I need to let that dry and then I'll sand that down with 180 and it'll be uh, ready for primer. All right, we had, uh, we had a bunch of rust down on this door. None of it was real bad. None of it was, was all the way through or anything like that. It was mostly surface rust. So what I did is I took a 36 grit flap wheel on a grinder and I ground off all the rust. Anywhere there was any kind of rust. There was some here, some up there, over in this area. What happens when you do that, when you use a real aggressive flap wheel, it puts uh, grooves or dents, it mucks up the metal underneath there. So you need to come back with a, a light coat of filler and anywhere you hit with the grinder with that flap wheel, you need to come back and fill that in uh, and then sand it off and smooth it. Since the scratches and grooves that that disc puts in are, are pretty minor, after I did my body filler, I was able to go straight to 180. Uh, so it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, by using the 180, it's ready for primer right now. Uh, one step of Bondo, so pretty easy. Uh, just one more thing done before we move on to primer. All right, so the, the truck's in its final coats of primer. Uh, the next step before I can paint it, I'm gonna sand it with uh, this big block and some dry 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, I'm not trying to correct any type of uh, defects in the bodywork, any kind of dips, waves, dents, rolls, any of that stuff. I'm not trying to fix that stuff. All I'm trying to do is just make it smooth. Uh, just have a nice smooth surface for the paint to, to land on 
uh, try to eliminate any kind of orange peel or uh, any kind of rough texture that's on there. There's going to be some orange peel in your primer, and that's what I'm doing is I'm taking this 400 grit on this block and knocking that orange peel out of there. Like I said, just getting it really smooth. To help control the dust and help clean up be easier, I just take a, a clean microfiber that's wet. And as I sand an area, I can take that microfiber and wipe over it and it'll pick up the majority of the dust. Uh, the other thing that it does, the microfiber will really hang up on any areas that you missed. It'll be rough and the microfiber will really grab onto that stuff, almost like Velcro. So you'll be able to tell where, where you need to go back and sand. And then the last thing that it does, it puts a little bit of shine on the on whatever you're working on on your project so you can get one last good look at it to see if there's dents or whatever you missed. In the areas that I can't longboard effectively uh, in this this body line right here or these door jams I'm going to use some gray scotch bright and uh, run along those and smooth them out with that. Alright it's all uh, it's all been blocked down uh, with either 400 on the longboard uh, or gray scotch bright, and then wiped down with a wet microfiber. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to blow it off, just compressed air. Uh, get all the cracks and all that stuff, get all the dust off of it that I can. Then I'll wipe it down uh, with some prep solvent. Uh, I'm going to use rubbing alcohol on a clean wipe all. Uh, then I'm going to mix up the paint. Uh, I'm going to come back in here after the paint's mixed, the gun's loaded and everything. I'm going to tack it off and I'm going to go ahead and paint it. Uh, so now that it's blown off, I'll wipe it down with rubbing alcohol. One of the, the benefits of using the rubbing alcohol is I just wiped it down with water. If there's any type of water on there, the rubbing alcohol will bond with the water. And I have a pretty good chance when I wipe the rubbing alcohol off of getting the water as well. If you use a regular prep solvent, it doesn't really stick to the water that well. And I've actually wiped prep solvent off and left water right underneath the rag. So with rubbing alcohol, that doesn't happen. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. I'm going to wipe it off with rubbing alcohol. Actually, the next thing I'm going to do is wet the floor. Uh, that way, if I splash any water from wetting the floor up on the, the project, I'll be able to get that with the rubbing alcohol when I come back. Another benefit to wetting the floor is uh, there's obviously the dust control side of it, but another benefit to it is static. Uh, static electricity on your on your project, as it's sitting there drying, it's got wet paint on it, that static is just pulling dust to it, dust and debris. So when you wet the floor down, that's all gone. When you're blowing it off before you paint it, uh, blow off all your plastics and all your masking as well, because you can have the cleanest project in the world, and if that paper has got a bunch of dust on it, as soon as you come by with your sprayer, with your spray gun, you're going to blow that dust off the paper, it's going to land in the project. So make sure you get that stuff blown off as best you can as well. All right, uh, it's all wiped down. It's finally ready to uh, mix up some paint, uh, tack it off, and paint it.
All right, the base coat's done. Getting ready to start to clear. The camera picks up a little late. I'm about halfway through the first coat of clear right here. I had also forgotten to turn on the air evac system, uh, so I kick that on, finish up the first coat. I give it a few minutes to dry, and here's the second coat of clear. Same strategy as always. The first coat is kind of light, and it's going to give it a little bit of texture. The second coat is heavy, and I use the texture from the first coat so the second coat has some traction, something to hang on to, so it doesn't run. That's it, almost all of the paintwork is done. Go ahead and check that out. Look at the clear, look how nice the truck looks. Be sure to tune in next time, and we'll start putting the truck back together.